Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance, where you can sign up for the Shannon's Club and Penrite Oil, offering technical assistance seven days a week. Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Classic Restos. Classic Restos is also not possible without the continued support from Shannon's Insurance. Why not pick up the phone and give Shannon's a call for a quote on 134646. You can also sign up to become a member of the Shannon's Club when you visit their website at shannons.com.au. And when it's time for the finest in oils and coolants, you cannot go past Penrite. They also offer you a 24-7 technical assistance line. Visit Penrite at penriteoil.com.au. And on this week's episode, I've travelled to the border that separates Victoria from New South Wales to Albury-Wodonga to bring you the 23rd annual Chrysler's on the Murray. This is it. If you have Mopar blood running through your veins, this event every year is like breathing. It just has to happen. Chrysler's on the Murray has reached its 23rd year, and like most professional outfits, it's increasing in size every step of the way. Chrysler's on the Murray plays tribute to the mighty Mopar. Whether it was made in the USA or locally here in Australia, the numbers of these cars sold years ago were lower than Ford and GMH. But that doesn't take a thing away from automotive prowess, style and an all-round good car. And proceeds from the event go to the RFS in various areas around the region. So what makes owning a Mopar so popular these days? Personally, I believe that it gets back to rarity the lesser in quantity made from the big three. They were mechanically tough and, like others, hosted some American underpinnings encapsulated around an Australian design body and interior trim options. Either way, no matter what side of the fence that you sit, in 2014 it's pretty cool to own any Mopar. With me now I have Jason. How are you, Jason? Uh, hi, Fletch. How are you? I'm oh, good, mate. Good. You know why I've picked on this guy? You know why? He has driven all the way from Perth in Western Australia in a 1978 CM. Yeah, that's dead right. It's a Jill X Packers 265 four speed. It's never missed a beat. It's done 171,000 Ks. Uh, I bought it in Perth and I only just got a licence Tuesday afternoon and then just on Wednesday morning just headed straight across the Noble and this is the sixth year I've come here and the first year in the Vale and I enjoyed it. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? And the old girl ran right across the width of Australia, this grand nation of ours, without any problems? I didn't even put a sap in. I didn't even put any water or not oil or nothing in it. Just, just went and it just went. I think it knew where it was going. <laughs> Isn't that marvellous? I take me hat off to you, mate. Good for you driving all the way from Perth, mate, and this trusty old girl. Well done. Uh, how long did it take you? Um, I left um, uh, Tuesday afternoon and I got here. Uh, w uh, uh, last night and uh, about 8 o'clock last night I got here. Okay. Yep. All right, so Tuesday and, well, Friday night. That's yeah. that's not bad going. No, that's all right. And I drove all the distance too. Good on you. And uh, I enjoyed it. And, uh, yeah. and only, uh, only for me, this car would have been crushed. So, so I'm glad to save it. Oh, good on you, Jason. No. You're a good fella. And to travel all the way to uh, support this wonderful event for 2014. Well done, mate. No worries. Have you have a good day. Yeah. Moving through the 2014 Chrysler's on the Murray. Time for John now. How are you, John? I'm good, Fletch. Yourself? Good, mate. Good. Look at this. A 1961 Newport. What an incredible car. It is indeed. And it's cost a lot. Oh, well, you know, www.cost a lot. Yes, well, you know, the older you are, the more your toys cost. But the thing is, John, you've invested into this machine. Have a look at the finished product. It's absolutely glorious in every way. There's got to be something said about these fin cars. These are the cars that, I've got to say, they make me drool. They do me too, and I've always wanted one. John, the way the car sits here on the paddock, its lines, its stance, the way it just sits, its presence here is just amazing. Tell us the story. Well, I bought it through uh, Old Yankee Imports in uh, South Australia. It came without floors or boot floor, no paint, but it was straight and all the parts were with it. And it started from there. So all the work's been done locally. Yep. Uh, you can get anything done in Aubrey. Yep. And um, it was, the body was done by fine line mm -hmm. after being acid dipped. 
so all the rust was gone. Isn't it good to getting back to the local perspective oh, yes. of getting things done? Yes, yeah. Well, you can get anything done. The, the trimming was done by a local guy, Jindera, yeah. Scott Brown, and the engine was done by Mel Church over at, uh, at um, Shepparton. Mm. So, you know, all you, within a local area. You finish plugging your mates, mate, or what? Well, they might give me some money one day. <laughs> oh, <we're just> <laughs> Let's talk about the engine now. The 361, the infamous 361 now, used in trucks, these engines. Uh, also, these big full-size luxury cars. There's a lot going on there. Yes, uh, basically a really good engine, a truck engine for a truck-size car. Yeah. You've got the two four-barrels on top there. I mean, don't they look a treat? Absolutely magnificent. Um, they must sound good when they're wide open. Well, yeah, they do. It's an Offenhauser inlet manifold, so it's a period piece. It's not a factory piece. Mm. But they did come, you could actually get them with uh, twin four barrels. John, I love what you've done around the engine bay, the stickers, the decals. No stone has been left unturned. I like it to look as if the factory could have made it. Mm. And I mean, so it's a little bit hot rodded, but yeah. uh, it has to have a factory look. We uh, go into the interior now, have a look at this, the, the, the Space Age dashboard. I mean, this is the thing with Chrysler, I think, that they were so outlandish. They always tried different styles and designs where the other two may not have been game enough. Well, it's called an Astrodome, and it's actually electroluminescent. Yeah. It has a power pack inside that pumps out 200 volts and lights up all the gauges. 200 volts to light your dashboard up. I mean, we're talking 1961 here. Yeah, you've got to be careful where you put your fingers under the dash from time <laughs> to time. John, I love the car in its entirety. I mean, the fins out back, the shiny work, everything's just brilliant, mate. Thanks for bringing the car here for this year's no event. No problem, Fletch. My pleasure. And have a good day. Thanks, mate. 2014 Chrysler on the Murray Place tribute to the American Motors Corporation, AMC. To help celebrate 60 years of AMC, their products are invited. The AMC products will have their own separate area for all to be showcased. Javelins, Hornets, AMXs, Matadors, Americans, Classics, Rebels and more. In 1954, the American Motors Corp, AMC, was formed by the merger of Nash Kelvinator Corporation and Hudson Motor Company. At that time, it was the largest corporate merger in US history. The company struggled at first, but then Rambler sales took off. By 1960, Rambler was the third most popular brand in the United States behind Ford and Chevy. In 1968, AMC was well known for its Javelin and AMX muscle cars. You're watching the Sensational Chrysler's on the Murray for 2014 thanks to Shannon's Insurance where you can sign up to become a member of the Shannon's Club and the finest in oils and coolants with Penright offering you a 24-7 technical assistance line. Back with more after this. Time for Steve. How are you, Steve? Good, thanks, Fletch. How are you going? Good, thanks, mate. 1965 Barracuda. Look at this. The first thing that just knocks you over with this car is that piece of curved glass in the back. Yeah, it's pretty big. I'm really scared about that, actually. Uh, they're not expensive to buy in the States, but to get them out here, that mm. would cost. Mate, if that broke, you'd be shattered. Just like the glass, absolutely. <laughs> Actually, it went down in the history books as the biggest single piece of glass in any built car. That's right, 14.4 square feet. Wow. It's Jeez. just amazing. It is. And this car came with air conditioning, so the back window's tinted as well, yeah. which makes it just a little bit different. It would have to be too. I mean, I can imagine the heat that that would generate. Uh, yes, it does. Yeah. In, on a hot day, the back, the back seat passengers get a nice sunburn yeah. across the back yeah. of the neck. Maybe look at this Barracuda, and uh, the first thing too that strikes you is our AP5, AP6 Valiants in the mid-60s, uh, derivatives from the United States. Yeah, well, uh, they were based around the, the Plymouth Signets and, uh, and Plymouth Valiants, and the Barracuda was uh, originally a two-door signet that they just chopped the back off and made it into a uh, fastback so that they could compete with the Mustangs. The Mustangs uh, outsold the, the Barracuda by about 100 to 1 or something like yeah, that, yeah. but uh, I s still think the, must the Barracuda is a much better car. Perfect timing with the release of the Mustang with Ford in 1964, bringing out the 64 and a half. They were in trouble at the time. They were in 49 as well with the single spin of Ford saving them then but it went for the other big two as well i mean chevy chrysler they all had their periods where they're in strife 
Yeah, they did. Um, I guess the uh, the the push then is to bring out something that's really different and yes. stands out. Yes. And I think Chrysler did that in the early 70s yeah. with the e-bodies. Yeah. I, I smile when I think of that because it was such an outlandish era. And we've said this a million times before, it's an era that will never be repeated. The way that cars were designed, manufactured and built, just their lines, the shiny stuff, their style, uh, quite amazing. Oh, yeah. I think the only thing that compares to the Barracuda in just for sheer strangeness is the AMC... Um, Marlin, yep. and I, if I could get a, get my hands on Marlin, I'd, mm. I'd consider that. Steve, engine up front, what's happening there? All right, we've got a 273 V8. Um, it's done 49,500 original miles, and the motor has never been out. Um, the car came from the factory with power steering, air conditioning, uh, the deluxe radio, uh, <laughs> and external mirrors, yep. and tinted windows all around. I think the interior of these cars is beautiful. Really, really nicely styled, aren't they? Oh, very much so. I mean, uh, unfortunately, when I got this one, uh, mechanically it was perfect, but mm. the um, genuine little old lady that owned it yeah. as the first owner yeah. uh, had to park it because yeah. she kept running into things. Yeah. Uh, so by the time we got it, it was pretty toasty on the inside. Yeah. So we put a legendary um, auto interior kit through it, and they make really good uh, replicas of the original OEM stuff. Awesome. Steve, great catching up, mate. Great, thank uh, you. I saw you a couple of weeks ago at the uh, Isabella and Marcus fundraiser uh, down there at Bond Beach, and it's good to see you again, mate, travelling all the way up here to Wodonga. Uh, it's in the blood. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks, Fletch. You're welcome. With me now, show coordinator Rod Taylor. How are you, Rod? I'm very well, thanks, Fletch. Good to see you back again. Thank you very much, mate. My pleasure. Why wouldn't I want to return to this event? It's the same line. It gets bigger and bigger every year. Whatever you're doing is working, Rod. Yeah, I think we're up in a good country and you've got good people running the show and everyone's having a wow of a time. Rod, I've said this before and I've described Chrysler on the Murray event as being a world-class show and going to Chrysler shows overseas, in terms of the quality in the cars, you've got it here. Yes, the guys, the Chrysler guys, they're definitely really enthusiastic and they'll put every last cent and every hour they can into the cars. They, they take great pride in their vehicles. Over the years, the show has also evolved to, uh, well, requiring a bigger grounds now. Yeah, we've found our fourth ground over the 22 years, and uh, but this will be the last one, I can tell you. We'll, we'll just keep improving it and making it work. Absolutely. You get a lot of local support as well, uh, local council. Yeah, Wodonga City Council have just been awesome. They have, uh, they actually built this ground with us in mind. They come and recruited us and uh, yeah, I've just put in uh, lighting and sealed the road and spent 700000 here. So yeah. they've been, and the Victorian government. It's just so good when, uh, when councils and local authorities get behind an event such as this. It is just so good. Uh, spinning off to that as well, proceeds of the day too, you're still supporting the RFS in different regions as well, which is amazing. Yeah, we uh, donate money. We don't donate the gate to three different fire brigades, $11,500. And over the last couple of years, our club ourself has donated 30000 back and put 30000 of our own money back into this ground as well, yeah. yeah, just to make it a better ground for everybody. So isn't it good? It's not just a whole heap of people turning up on a paddock with their cars and going again. The reason behind uh, goes much deeper. And, uh, mate, hats off for that one. Yeah, we're all volunteers, so we want to we see something for our time and effort. And uh, yeah, it's just been one of those things that's worked and worked well. There's no doubt about it. This is it. Chrysler's on the Murray, the largest outdoor Chrysler show in Australia. And there's a lot to be said for that, Rod. Yeah, there is. Um, we're actually the smallest Chrysler club in Australia, only about 35 members. And as I said before, they're all volunteers and they all just work their bums off for this weekend. And I'm very, very proud of the whole team. Good on you, mate. Yeah. OK, you better drop the website for your club. Uh, best one is actually info at chryslersonthemurray.com.au. Good on you. If you're into your Mopars and even if you're not, if you haven't experienced Chryslers on the Murray for 2014, make sure you try and do it next year in 2015. Thanks, Rod. Thank you, Fletch. Good on you, mate. See you next year. How would you like to travel to the United States of America and see some of the largest motoring events, car collections and auto museums on the planet? Well, GM, Ford and Chrysler Nationals are happening at Carlisle this year and they are welcoming a Fletch tour. Then there's a return in August to the Motown city of Detroit for the famous Woodward Dream Cruise. If you'd like to find out more information about coming along, go to classicrestos.com.au and click on the Fletch Tours icon for more information. Back with more after this.
how awesome is Chrysler on the Murray for 2014? It does attract international visitors. We have Mike. How are you, Mike? Good, Fletch. Thanks. So how many years have you been coming here? This is my 11th year. Well, there you go. He's no newbie to the event. Tell us where you're from. I live in Atlanta, Georgia, which is in the U.S. I'm originally from Illinois. Um, well, the car won't hold that against you. <laughs> so tell, them, tell me, Mike, over in the United States, there's no doubt that you've got around to a lot of car shows over there. How does it compare to these? Uh, they're good. Uh, this one is just as good, if not better, than some of them I've been to. Yeah. That, that's awesome, isn't it? To think that, as Rod has alluded to earlier, such a small car club has evolved a car event to the stage that it's at now. Amazing. Mike, thank you so much for your time and the interview coming all the way from the United States of America, mate, to this fantastic Mopar event. Thank you. Thanks for talking to me, Fletch. No worries. Have a look at this, a 1969 Dodge Charger Daytona. How are you, John? I'm good, thanks, buddy. That's the way. First time I've seen this car. It's the first time this car's been on the road since 1976. How long have you had it? We've had about six years. Where'd you get it from? We got it off Long Island, uh, New York, bought it on eBay. What was the condition? Run us through when you found this car. Uh, well, when we found it, it was terribly beat up. Uh, in 1974, the car was crashed into a pole and rolled onto its roof. So there was roof damage, there was quarter damage due to the wing uh, at the back twisting around. Uh, the nose was totally destroyed and we luckily got replacement panels. Sounds like there was a bloke that was driving that couldn't drive. I guess so. There was some rumour that he may have uh, done it intentionally, I don't know, but it, he made a mess, whatever. Well, look, you know, someone else's loss is another guy's treasure. You've got this car in terrible condition, but the amount of work that you've done on it is absolutely amazing. Well, we have absolutely rebuilt it from nothing, from a, a bare body shell. Uh, we had a fantastic guy, body man, who, who beat it out, everything out properly. Yeah. Uh, like he used to do in the old days. Yeah. We're fortunate to get hold of Okatingi, it was great. It's what Classic Restos is all about, isn't it? I mean, when we talk of a Classic Resto, boy, we've got one here. Um, the rotisserie shot there, we see the green in around the trunk and up on the back of the rear parcel shelf. When you first see that green, it just looks so good. Yeah, it's a nice colour. The car was always green and, uh, yeah, it is a good colour. Up under the hood, what's lurking there, John? Oh, it's just got a, the factory original 440 and auto. Yeah. Would have been great if it was a four-speed one, but you can't be too fussy with these. Uh, that's all right. 375 horsepower straight out of the shop. There's nothing too shabby about that. No, nah, she goes good. Yeah. Goes good, I yeah. Mean, it's the sort of car that I've said a million times before, too, that can uh, be sitting here in the paddock and look as though it's doing 100 miles an hour. What an incredible shape. So gimmicky back in the day, designed for NASCAR and racing to the point where they didn't sell, and now... They're just like hen's teeth, aren't they? That's correct. Yes, people, they used to pull the nose off the front to sell the cars back in the day. But now, of course, the, a nose is worth a fortune if you could ever find one. Well, at least a NASCAR this size car and this shape car at 214 miles an hour. You do the maths on that and work out the kilometres on steel wheels. It's just incredible when you hear those statistics. Yeah, I believe this was the first car to break 200 mile an hour on a NASCAR circuit. Yeah. John, it's a gem. Thanks for being on today's show, mate. My hat comes off to you. Well, actually, I'm not wearing the hat today. John is good for you, but, mate, this is one hell of a car. Your restoration, incredible, mate. 10 out of 10. Well done. Thank you. My son and I, not just me. Thanks, buddy. Your show's terrific. I, I enjoy watching it. Thanks. That's great. It's, it's nice to know that one person watches, isn't <laughs> it, mate? Anyway. Cries on the Murray 2014. We've got a bloke here waiting for his wife to come back. How are you, mate? Oh, well, then again, it could be a lady waiting for the right bloke to come along. Well, I hope you've enjoyed just some of Chrysler's on the Murray for 2014. And I'm sure you'll agree that Rod Taylor and his club have done another sensational effort of pulling this year's event together. Part two of Chrysler's on the Murray will be seen on next week's episode of Classic Restos. Keep in mind that ClassicRestos.com.au is the website that you need for the DVD boxed sets of the show, Classic Restos merchandise, travelling on a Fletch tour and how my major sponsors can help you as well. As I say at the end of every episode, until next week, no matter where you're watching Classic Restos from, please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch and I thank you very much for watching. Yeah, I was actually going to go to a dance but he had nobody to take. You can like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash classic restos TV and watch catch up episodes at shannons.com.au.
Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance, where you can sign up for the Shannon's Club and Penrite Oil, offering technical assistance seven days a week.